Sometimes you just got to look after your bush, you see. I call this a bush because all natural it is. There's no Brazilians or a runway strip team. No, it's a bush. Some people might call it a brush, you could say. But unfortunately, this bush has lost its wood. Yes, the wood has fallen out of the hole of the bush or brush. Have I gone too far? <laughs> Maybe. Well, anyway, I want to fix this um, old snow sem brush. Now, I've never used snow sem with this old brush. No. I've had this a very long time, and I think it was very old when I got it. Yeah, I think it was my grandfather's. It's a number 145 snow sem uh, brush. That it is. Okay. Well, the thing about it is, I'll use this for my dusting brush. Now, if you're a woodworker, you need a brush, yeah, or a bush for your, uh, yeah, dusting off and all that. Not too leg time, no. One with one wooden handle. Now, some people might have uh, a brush like this. They might want to use, all right? All natural. Again, this one's got the start of the. Uh, yeah, anyway. Unfortunately, these things are just cumbersome and awkward. You can't get your nooks and crannies and stuff like that. So I tend to have something like this with long bristles. You see. You get into all the nooks and crannies. Yeah, a brush with long bristles is better when you want to dust off your tent. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Yeah. So, before you put your wood in the hole, you need to do a bit of preparation because the wood's flat in the hole. And I noticed in this particular brush, look how shallow that flipping mortise is. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to make the mortise, uh, that's a shallow tenon. <laughs> that's the mortise. <laughs> that's the tenon. Right? Look how shallow that is. It was at about 10 mil. Not even half an inch. It's ridiculously short. It's about three eight. That's all it is. You know, that's nuts. That's, ne that's never going to hold it in there. But although, I, how old is it? It's, it's young as old. So the bit of glue that they use has held it very well. So remember that good glue will hold longer than shitty glue. So I advise you get your glues from like I don't know, Eureka, Eureka glues and places like that. Not necessarily. Like Katika and you know, there, there's glue and there's glue. There's D3, there's D and D3 glues. There's D2s and D2s, and there's D4s and D4s, or there's PUs and PUs. You know, polyurethane glue. <sighs> Some manufacturers care about the products. I have to admit, I'm very pleased with stuff I'm gonna get from Eureka glues, and I'm really pleased that they're brought out. I'm not brought out. They're bought out, or they're taken over um, Cascamite as well, the pads as a wood glue, which I use a lot. So what I'm going to do is, uh, to uh, make that more secure in its hole, more penetration, you know, you need more penetration of the wood in its hole, okay? Um, the thing is, though, I'm not going to drill that any deeper, no. I'm not going to make that any uh, longer on this tenon, no. I've got to do something else. Oh, I wonder what I can do to make this handle, you know, this wooden handle, this wooden, it's not a knob, there's a handle, okay, uh, fit in that hole, for longer, even though it's probably God knows how old it is already. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to do a little trick. First of all, we need to do a bit of preparation, we do. So we're going to plonk this in here, all right? And here is my voice. So, oh, Craig, my dear missus is over there. Talking about your bush, darling. <laughs> come, 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 darling, come here, darling. She's coming. Oh, she's wiping her feet before she comes in the workshop. That's unusual. Are you trying to make an impression? What are you tippy toeing for? <laughs> Darling, come, 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 I need to speak to you about. Uh, <clears throat> this is my bush. Some yeah. people might call that a brush. You would call this a bush or a brush? brush. I would say it's more like a bush. Well, I do like to get, when you've got your bush and it's hole, do you like to put the wood in the hole? I'm going to ask you a question. I think you're just being rude. What are you on about? <laughs> you've got a f oh! You've got a filthy mind, you have, woman. Um. What do you want? <laughs> when you finish your video, can you come in and look at my trenches? Oh, does that also have a brush? <laughs> or a bush? Do you want me to look at a trench? I never heard it called that before. No. Anyway, so get back to what we're supposed to be doing. Crikey. Oh, it's Induendu Day, by the way. It's, the, it's National Induendu Day. So that's what we're doing. Right, let's bring you over here. All right. So we can we're still just about to see. I'm just going to clean off the old glue first. Because the thing is, it's got some really hard... Glue. It's not a PVA. Looks like some sort of animal glue in there. That must be fairly old. Yeah. Maybe it's maybe it's been made from the bush. <laughs> I know I'm a child. I know. I know. I'm gonna drag that off there like so. Just use the cabinet scraper to remove the surface. 
glue. Da, 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 da. I know it's only a brush, but not be fun. You know how you get a bit attached to things, you know. Some people might say you're attached to the missus and that you've been together for 30 odd years. No, it's just I can't bother to do anything about it. That's all it is, you yeah. <laughs> I think I see, the feeling might be mutual. Sometimes it's better the devil that you know, isn't it, eh? <laughs> okay, she's not in there. <laughs> no, Caroline, she's a good lass. She's good to me anyway. And the kids. Blimey. 30 odd years married. How many woodworkers, okay? Can say that they've been married 30 odd years. Seems like, seems like old fashioned idea, doesn't it, you know? So I'm good. I'm not actually drilling this any deeper. No. All I'm gonna do is clean the glue out. Which I have done. Yeah? There's a little glue in the bottom of, the, of, of that. Mortars. Yeah, the loads. And that's hard old glue. And your glue does not stick to glue very well. No, dry glue that is. So if you've got um, if for instance you're doing anything like that, you don't where you're gonna have to glue onto glue, you're better off not allowing the glue to fully dry first if you're in a, in, a, in the uh, in the stages of construction. Otherwise, just get rid of the old glue and start again. Let's get that off there. You can see it. You can better see the the words on the side a little bit better then. I might even oil that might make it look pretty. I don't know, it's only a brush, isn't it? No, I'm not gonna char it. Uh, if I char that, make that all black, yeah? Uh, the, uh, the likelihood is there'll be no bristles left. It'll be a bonfire. Yeah. So, as you can see, this one here, it says it's tested it is. It's a tested brush. What does it mean it's used? They used the brush before they gave me the brush. I can't, like I say, I can't remember how old this is. This, this, I think it's a junk soul. Anyway, it was tested and approved by the something cement marketing company. Oh no, by the cement marketing company limited for snow sem. <laughs> uh, it's a, a cement paint brush. Oh, it's a Hamilton's. Oh, now I am a fan of Hamilton's paint brushes. Before they were taken over by Acorn, who kind of they ruin everything because it's just like a mass production company. Now this is a Hamilton's uh, paint brush. Okay. Now, Hamilton's paintbrushes are some of the paint, best paintbrushes you can buy. Now, some of the China Bristol um, paintbrushes are also excellent, but these ones um, by Hamilton's have, you've got the Hamilton's Perfection, these are Namal Var, these are varnish brushes, this one is. Now, the Hamilton's Perfection had the copper, um, little copper uh, rivets and what have you, and a uh, decent stainless steel ferrule. Uh, it, where it's vulcanised into the felt, it's, it's just well-made brushes, and the bristles are properly trimmed. They're just decent, unlike those flipping nylon brushes that you seem to be getting to the DIY stores or anywhere these days. You know, here in France, it's really hard to get hold of a good quality brush. In fact, it's almost impossible. Now, natural bristle brushes are not from the bush. No, all from the missus. No, it's yeah, you know, it could be a badger hair brush. Poor badgers. This isn't, I don't know what hair this is. I don't know if it's horse hair, but anyway, it, it's a nat natural bristle. Now, but it's, uh, I suppose, if, for instance, if you're not actually running around chasing animals, manhandling to the ground and cutting off their manes and what have you to make a, uh, a bristle brush, well, that, uh, you know, and it's part of the, uh, I don't know, if you're not a vegetarian, that is, it's part of the process of, of meat, well, then I, I haven't got so much of a problem with it. Um, but, you know, if you're doing professional type work, you want professional type brushes. And those flipping things, nylon or polyester brushes and foam brushes, they have their uses, like for stain and stuff like that. I get it, you know. But uh, you can't get a proper finish with a... I mean, a proper, proper finish, unless you do the oils, with a foam brush. No. All those silly, like, paint pads. You've got a proper brush. A proper brush! In this case, it's a snow sem brush for doing your like your pebble dashing. Yeah, so you have a snow sem brush for painting pebble dash. The pebble dash is when you've got stone uh, basically being thrown at you at your wall uh, into like uh, into a render on, on the side. You end up like a rough finish, and then you can you know you've got so it's a nightmare to paint. So I need a really thick lamb's wool roller, and the splatter goes absolutely everywhere. So you've got to bear in mind, or you have to spray the walls. Or you use a snow sand brush like this one, you see. You get it in your ornaments and crannies, and it takes absolutely forever. But this is my dusting brush. Okay? Good for the beard as well, apparently. Anyway, so <laughs> let's get to it, shall we? So what I'm going to do is, all right, make sure all the, obviously, all the glue is removed. So I'll use a knife. 
around this mortise because mortise, the handle for a very long time has not been sitting in the mortise properly. So this tenon needs cleaning on the shoulders. And all I'm using for that is a knife because it's round, you see, and plug it off. Lock the knife off. There you go. So you know, little cheap ass um, snap off knife. Not snap on. You know, you, you know, you snap the tips off and get new, a new cutting edge every time. Just remove that off there. I'm not editing this video. It's warts and all. I'm a very busy guy at the moment, so I can't spend hours and hours editing videos, especially that I do daily videos. So it's like, you know, it's not really possible. But you can, I, you know, if I'm doing an edited video, it, it would have took me at least four hours to um, do the editing process. Because you always end up with more footage than you need and trying to get it down to about five minutes, five to 10 minutes for a video. And then uh, it just takes absolutely ages, absolutely ages. You lose so much of the detail. And I'll try to make this a conversation, you see, between us, you see, for friends, okay? Hello, friends. Hello, woodworking friends, or DIY people. Uh-huh. Now, in case you didn't realise, this channel is about helping people and also trying to entertain a bit, I suppose, as well, maybe. I hope I'm a bit entertaining. A bit rude sometimes, but you know. <laughs> so we'll back at the wood now, won't it, you know? So I'm going to try and get that right in there, all right? So, yeah, it's definitely better. It wobbled a bit, but we're going to solve that. That we are. Now, it's a very shallow Morton uh, tenon. Now, well, the reason why I decided to do this was not because the handle fell off. It's because, hang on, that, I'll try to drive the handle in further so it had a tighter fit because that's sort of sit, sitting about, you know, there was a big gap around it, you see. So I thought, I don't know, I'll give it a few wax and what have you. And while doing that, it fell off. <laughs> so, so, okay, let's quickly make a video uh, on. Uh, fixing the handle back on my snow sem brush. It sounds a bit odd, but you see, the, the thing is, it's not just about snow sem brushes. This technique that I'm gonna show you in a moment, once I've got this all cleaned up, you can use this on brooms and all sorts of stuff. You see, the thing about a broom, for instance, it doesn't actually have much um, depth there for the, for the length of the handle, so there's a lot of leverage. And some people put a screw right up the inside edge, you know, from the, the back end of the actual, um, uh, the actual head of the, the broom. But this technique you could use for almost anything, really. And this is so simple. I'm not, I will not need to use a metal fixing, a metal fastening, with this uh, technique I'm going to show you. I call it a technique. It's, it's a bit Heath Robinson, actually, but it works. I know it works because I've done it before. I'm just cl I'm still cleaning glue out here, just in case you're wondering what I'm doing. Okay. Now, I'll be uploading a few other videos recently to the channel, quite a few videos. I've been playing about with a piece of software, an online software called Opus Clip. Some people might know about it already. And what it does, it takes this long form video and it converts the long form into 60 second shorts, vertical shorts. I'm still learning with it, so bear with us. Cause it's just, um, I have to be really conscious when make my long form that it's going to be converted into short form. Not necessarily just for this channel, but probably for my Cut Crafty channel as well. Just in case you didn't know, we have another channel that I'm using as a bit of a dumping ground for um, woodworking shorts when I've got too many. <laughs> but they're only generally um, Obis Clips type, yeah, they're cut, they're cut shorts I'm putting on there. So yeah, that's good, that's in there. So it's in, in there much, much better. It's tight fit now, okay? But what we're gonna do is, we're gonna strengthen that because that is too, well, it's got too much wobble. Look, I'm going to wobble on that. Yeah, even when it's in hours, just, it's got to wobble its way out. And it's going to be so reliant on the glue, but also a little nail that was put through, which I've actually removed. I've pulled that out. Yeah? So I've removed my iron. All right, so what we're going to do, all right, is so simple. I mean, it's ridiculously simple. I'm going to st start on this end. Uh, I don't know if you can see it there. It's really there. And we're going to drill a hole. All right? Do you know what? I need to get myself some good quality Brad Point bits because these ones are not in here rubbish. The ones I've collected over the years probably came in sets and stuff like that, but they ain't very good. Now, all I'm going to do is just drill a hole in the middle. Fairly obvious. I'm using an 8mm. You use whatever you got. Get the hole. Obviously, in this case, I won't go bigger than that because I'm going to actually make it too weak. All right. I'm reasonably centre. I'm centre enough in there. And I've got to do the same. And I know where the centre is because I've already I found centre already from the actual point of the original hole that they put in there. So let's remove this. 
So I don't need to use any dowel guides, because yes, that's what we're going to do. We're actually going to dowel the handle <laughs> back on. Now, if it, anything else, I wouldn't be that bothered with. If it's one of them plastic or any rubbishy things, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be bothered with. But because this is actually a good, a good, a good brush, and it's, I don't know, I'll get a bit nostalgic with things, you know. I've had a very long time. I can't remember if I bought it. I can't remember if it was gifted to me. I can't remember if it was my grandfather's. I, don't, I just cannot remember. So, all I know, it's quite old. That's all I know. I've probably gone a bit too deep. In fact, I've gone all the way through. <laughs> but you can't tell because you can't see through the bush. Now, that's the problem, you see. When the bush is too bushy, okay, it's hard to find the hole. I'll just put that out there, okay? Just, you know, you, like, oh, let's stop now. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to put that in there, all right? So the fact what we're doing is, it's, um, it's almost going to be like a, a stepped tenon because we're putting a loose uh, a dowel in there and then into there. Now, you could use PVA, but being so it's a bit of a loose um, tenon, what I'm going to actually do, we'll say the, the fit is quite loose, that's kind of what I'm trying to say. I'm going to use... Some dregs and the I've got some PU glue here. Uh, this one by Eureka Glues. I've actually decanted it into a jam jar because although I have been having it upside down, it's got to the stage it's too crusty inside, and it's just you just end up really lumps all the time. So now I've got to the stage now where I've got it in a jam jar and upside down in a jam jar, um, so there's no oxygen, and I just use a use a, use a spreader because this is what happens. You see, you see what's going on here. Look, uh, look at that, all crusts up like that around and the lid, and it's just a mess. So what I'm going to do is. Put a little bit of that, a smear of this PU wood glue. This one is by Eureka Glues, just so you know. For the purpose of being open and honest, because although I am happy to do reviews, what I are, am not happy in doing is lying about stuff. That's one thing you'll learn about me, if you stick with us. I will not lie about stuff. No. I think everybody in this world, pretty much, apart from the liars, has had enough of liars and cheats and rip-off merchants. So if somebody, a company, approaches me and they want me to do a video on a product, I will be fair and honest about that product. And that's just who I am. I just, I just, I'm, I've been cheated on so many times from family as well, you know, and lied to so many times. You get to a stage where you just had enough of it, you know. And it's kind of not just a promise to other people, it's a promise to myself that I'm going to be open, honest and sincere. So what you see in these videos, and that's one of the reasons why I'm, as you probably know, I'm doing most of my videos are, uh, well, not edited. Because to me, it seems the most honest way to, um, well, to be honest with you, isn't it? You think, as soon as you start editing things, excessively edi edi editing things, you have to sometimes with the short videos, but that's only because you haven't got enough time in the video. They, do, they don't give you more than 60 seconds. So um, you have to speed things up, just trying to get the, the point across sometimes. All right, so I'm squeezing that in there like so. And what I want to do, all right, because I'm not going to put a, uh, so I've got it in, it's in. I've got my wood in the hole of the bush. Or the brush. Oh, blimey, test it again. Now, what I'm going to do is now I'm going to clamp that, all right? So I'm going to squeeze it up. I could do it in the, in the voice here, but the problem is I'm going to crush all the bristles. So I'm just going to get a couple of uh, uh, a, a couple of clamps, I reckon. Might be the easiest way. Nothing too big. Or a clamp, actually, because I'm going to get one on the end. So maybe, any mini mine, maybe one of those might be better because it'll sit. Because there's a little hole in the end of the clamp. It will. It will sit, won't slip on the end of the handle if you, if you see what I mean. Now it will crush the bristles a little bit. I oh, can't really do much about that. I'll, I'll, I'm just going to part part the bush, okay? Because there is no landing strip, as you could say, I suppose. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I can't help myself. Oh, I, I, just, I just love silly humour. If, if you understand me, I, I love comedy such as, I don't know, Little Britain, all that sort of stuff. Really squitty, just open all hours, you know, funny. It's just, it's just funny. Harmless fun, that's what it is. But these days, it's all deemed as being a little bit had, but politically incorrect. But that's me, all over. 
sorry. <laughs> right, so that's going on there like so. And I can see I've gone a bit skewy, so I need to bring that out a bit. The bristles will return, so it's not a problem. To their natural form. I just don't want the, the uh, PU glue expanding to an extent where it actually... Uh, still wrong. Uh, expanding too much and pushing the handle out of the actual... Yeah. Of the actual... Uh, Bush, brush, brush, bush. Oh, okay, that's on. Very happy with that. Now, when that's gone off, I am fairly confident that it's going to stay in its hole. There you go. See, see. Now that'll lose out of there a little bit. And there's, it's, it's a bit like polyurethane wood glue is a bit like that expanding foam you put around your windows. Just a little bit more sticky. Right. <laughs> so it's, just, it's a different formulation, but effectively it's the same stuff. And that'll expand in that mortise and set in that mortise. And it shouldn't compress too much. That will, to a degree, where, where there's air space, um, there will be a little bit of compression there. But it will hold onto that brush enough for a very, very long time. So there you go. I'll put the handle back on the bush. And don't worry, those bristles will return. <laughs> so there you go. That's how you place or repair an old wooden brush, whether it be a broom or, in this case, a snow sem brush which I use as a duster while I'm working, you know, getting the old dust off my woodwork and stuff. So there you go. All right. Is that pointless video? <laughs> I don't care. I did it anyway. All right? Yeah. Don't like it, write a letter. Anyway, be very much kind, though, and boot the old like button, because then you get a warm fuzzy feeling in your pocket every time I upload another video. And, well, it helps the channel, you know. Yeah. Maybe the little bell icon, because then you get that warm fuzzy feeling. That's it, yeah. You go, I'll try to get this out again. Come on, I've got to try again. <laughs> and if you'd be most kind, boot the old like button and subscribe to the channel and maybe that little bell icon because then you get a warm fuzzy feeling in your pocket every time I upload another video. Is that right? I think so. Oh, crikey. Bugger. Toodaloo.